What is up guys, Random Onim here. We're going to be doing a beginner's guide to Varus. Uh, I did a beginner's guide to Diana Jungle previously, and 80 carry is my second most played role, so I figured I'd pick up an 80 carry game to kind of do a beginner's guide uh, to Varus. And I thought this was a really great game, uh, because this is not a game where I stomp. This is a game where I make all sorts of really bad uh, mistakes with Varus. I kind of forgot how to play 80 carry. And in this game, we kind of see at the beginning of the game that I make all these dumb mistakes. I wind up almost throwing the game multiple times. And then I kind of remember how to play AD carry and I start playing smarter. And uh, I wind up uh, carrying the game and I wind up uh, winning the game for my team. I wind up getting a quadra kill at the end um, and wind up being a really good game. So I figured that this would be a, um, a really good game to kind of go over basically showing that, you know, the common mistakes that a lot of AD carries make. When they're first starting out and also talking about like how you can recover uh, when things are going really badly uh, at first so in this game we're, we're running fleet footwork uh, as our keystone for Varus it gives us kind of a better of a laning phase it gives us a little bit more sustain a little bit more movement speed which is very useful for Varus uh, being in a mobile AD carry kind of a really interesting team comp we've got a new new support this game and uh, got a Lee Sin in the jungle, uh, Talia as our mid, and Fiora as our top lane. And uh, our Fiora is going up against a Rakan in top lane, which is very weird. But she actually winds up losing pretty badly to him. So I guess that guy, you know, must be either really good at Rakan or our top laner was really bad at Fiora. I'm not sure which is which. Um, but basically, the way that this laning phase is going to play out is we've got a Misfortune and a Blitzcrank versus a Varus and a Nunu. So. Uh, Varus Nunu is really kind of more of a poke lane, and Blitzcrank Misfortune is more of a kill lane. So that does give us a slight advantage. There's kind of this uh, triangle when you talk about um, the uh, different types of lanes and bot lane. There's kill lanes, uh, poke lanes, and sustain lanes. So um, poke lanes in general have a, an advantage over kill lanes because they can outpoke the kill lanes, so the kill lanes can't all in them. Um, and then you've got the sustain lanes will uh, do be really good against the uh, poke lanes because they can out sustain the poke. And then kill lanes do really well against uh, sustain lanes because they can basically just all in and the sustain doesn't really matter that much. So you can see that we're having kind of a clown fiesta right now at level 1. Uh, definitely did not play that as well as I could. But we wind up burning pretty much every single person summer spells, heals, flashes, exhausts, all of that is gone. So we make sure that we call that out for our jungler, uh, so that way our jungler knows that, hey, this is a good lane to gank. Um, and if you're playing AD carry, you always want to call out when summoner spells are burned, um, because you know that'll encourage your mid laner to roam down, that'll encourage your jungler to gank for you. So we took this massive trade early on, we push in the lane, we're going to do a quick back uh, just to reset, this is not a really good back timing because obviously I can't really buy much, I think I only wind up having like 300 gold, so I think I wind up getting like a dagger or something like that, um, but at least we can kind of hopefully win out on that sustained war. And a lot of winning in bot lane is out sustaining your opponent and forcing them to take bad backs. So uh, that's basically what we're trying to do, we're trying to push out the lane so we can get the uh, our back off and then force them to back and since I'm going more towards attack speed I'm going to go for a Ginsu's Rage Blade first item while Misfortune probably wants to go towards um, either a Dust Blade or a Yomu's um, we can probably have a pretty good trade against her I mean if we get really lucky then she might try to go for something like Bia first item which is going to be very hard for her to do so we're kind of farming under tower here uh, the general rule with farming is um, with the melee minions they can take two tower shots and one auto attack to kill them and then with the range minions uh, they can take one tower shot and you need two auto attacks to kill them so if you're playing a support it can be really helpful uh, if you help your AD carry so like for the range minions if you auto attack a range minion once if they're full health and that can help set up the wave for your um, AD carry but if you do it incorrectly you can also screw the wave for your AD carry so be very careful when you're trying to auto attack under the tower to try and help your AD carry because you might wind up hurting them uh, I definitely did not um, auto attack as well as I probably could have but um, yeah, so far we're doing we're doing okay. We're not really trying to 
go crazy in the laning phase. We're just trying to outpoke um, the uh, misfortune and basically try to get her to take bad back timings. Um, it's kind of a weird. So right now we're, warm, we're roaming up. We're trying to see if we can get a play either on the Infernal Drake or potentially mid lane, but they already took the Scuttle Crab, so we can't do that. So we're going back to lane. Misfortune and Blitzcrank is kind of a, a really difficult lane to play around because Misfortune likes to use her double up on um, low health minions. And typically you want to stand behind minions to avoid Blitzcrank hooks. So uh, you have this kind of weird situation where you can't stand behind your low health minions otherwise you get double upped by uh, Misfortune and you can't, um, you know, stand in front of the minions otherwise you'll get Blitzcrank hooks. So Rakan comes in, he TPs, we immediately back off. It's going to wind up being a kill onto Nunu. Uh, if this happens and you're playing top lane, you should immediately just be hard shoving the wave and trying to get tower damage um, as fast as possible. I don't think that our Fiora really pushed the lane that fast. You really need to punish your top laner if they try to teleport to bot lane. So Rakan goes mid lane. So yeah, our, our Fiora should be getting tons of tower damage if she's you know hard pushing the lane and things like that. We got our Lee Sin who's lurking right now. He's just basically preventing a dive from the Blitzcrank. That's very helpful. I'm actually really grateful that the Lee Sin sticks around because I'd be in I'd be in really bad shape if they tried to dive me right now. I'm trying to actually kind of bait the dive. See if they're willing to go for it, because I know the Nunu is close. So I land the slow into misfortune. I'm trying to get a little bit of damage on them. Uh, Talia winds up messing up her wall a little bit, Blitzcrank flashes out, we're not going to get a kill, but at least we get some summoner spells, and we're going to force them out of lane, so my priority is to basically hard shove right now. Even though I'm low mana, I just want to hard shove and then reset and go back to base. Actually, I think I decided to push, and I decided to get some tower damage. Because um, I'm not too worried about um, them backing right now. So in my head, I have this internal timer of when they're going to be coming back to lane. I also see Kha'Zix on the mini-map. So Kha'Zix was in mid lane, and he starts rotating down. So in my head, I know Kha'Zix is going to arrive in, I believe, around like 15 seconds. So I kind of stick around. I'm trying to basically waste Kha'Zix time. I'm going to clear the wave, and then I'm going to back up. Because I know that uh, Kha'Zix is on his way. Unfortunately, the Nunu stays and he's going to wind up dying. Uh, I was definitely pinging Nunu to back up. Because I, in my head, I knew that Kha'Zix was going to show up. And the enemy bot lane was going to show up as well. Um, but he unfortunately did not listen. So you have to keep that in your head. Like No matter what role you're playing, you need to know like roughly how long it takes to get from base to lane. How long it roughly takes to get from mid lane to bot lane. And I once memorized all the times, but I have since forgotten them. But you kind of develop this kind of intuition for how long it is uh, after a while. So that's why I kind of instinctually knew like how long I could stay in lane without endangering my life. Um, so yeah, we had to back. We end up, uh, you know, giving over another kill with Nunu. Um, yeah, the, the Kha'Zix is kind of all over the place. He's doing a lot of work, and our Lee Sin is struggling a little bit, which is always really rough when you're playing Lee Sin. You kind of need to have a dominant early game if you're going to be successful with uh, uh, Lee Sin. I get hooked, and I immediately get bursted out. Uh, nearly die. I have to wind up flashing. That was really bad on my part. Um, but I feel like I can stay in lane because of my fleet footwork. So if I didn't have fleet footwork, I would have to back at this point. But I can kind of sustain up using fleet footwork um, and just kind of play safe. And that way I don't completely miss out on all of these waves. Thanks. So now that we've hit level 6, uh, they've used their ultimate. We should have ours. So um, if I get a gank or something like that, I'm definitely going to be looking to all in them with um, my ultimate. Uh, I really like Varus because he does have some CC, and I really like champions with crowd control. That's one of the things that I really like the most. Um, and, you know, Varus is one of the few ADCs with really good crowd control. So Tilia comes down, she hops out on the wrong side of the wall. Um, but we wind up getting the kill on Blitzcrank. He winds up blowing his Zanyas for no reason, or his stopwatch for no reason. We wind up getting the kill, so that's very helpful. So that puts the lane in our favor. Uh, my team is rotating up for the um, the Drake. I know that they can take it without me, so I'm basically just going to try and keep um, the Misfortune in the lane. 
and I don't want to rotate up because if I rotate up then they'll probably figure out that we're doing Drake and Orianna might try to rotate down or Kha'Zix might try to rotate to try and stop so by me staying in lane I kind of bait them into thinking that we're not doing drag so I'm kind of pushing really hard to try and get this tower because I see that mid tower is really really low um, but I think I wind up overstaying here a little bit Yeah, so I'm keeping my eye on the minimap this whole time. I'm seeing this fight break out with Orianna. There's the Kha'Zix. Yeah, and I think I, I thought I could get away from him, but he winds up catching me. Yeah, he goes invisible, gets some movement speed boost, and winds up killing me. So yeah, that was really bad on my part. Overstayed, was not keeping mental track of those timers of how long it was going to take Kha'Zix to get there. Wind up giving up a double kill. I definitely think that... I fell into that trap of, you know, you want to get first tower, you want to get first tower so bad, and I saw that mid tower was really low, so I'm like, oh god, I gotta get first tower, otherwise my team's gonna lose it, and I wind up making a mistake because of it. And as a result of this, uh, Rakan TPs to bot lane, uh, we got Kha'Zix in bot lane, we got Misfortune and Blitzkrieg in bot lane, they're gonna wind up taking our tower instead. So because of I was too eager and I was in too much of a hurry to try and get a uh, bot lane tower, I wind up giving up first tower, which is really bad. So you can see right now, we are currently uh, 5k gold down, and it's only 11 minutes in. It's 11 kills to 3. So this is a this is a horrible game right now. This is like usually forfeit immediately type of game, but we wind up not forfeiting. I figured the Blitzcrank is going to try and pull me over the wall, so I kind of I ward over there just to make sure. So right now I'm basically in full uh, farm up mode. Just trying not to feed any more than I already have. Um, and basically just try to focus on farming so that way that I can hopefully uh, outscale the misfortune. Nunu's checking them. I feel like we can probably take this fight. So I kind of bait the Rakan in. He deals a surprising amount of damage. I kind of just stand my ground because I know I can't get away from him. But we are able to outburst uh, him with the Nunu ultimate. Talia comes in to play by her, wind up one getting the kill. So now I'm going to basically hard shove as much as possible. I see that uh, Lee Sin is uh, going for Rift Herald, so I want to push so that way Kha'Zix feels like he needs to stop uh, my push rather than necessarily going after Lee Sin. If I wasn't pushing at all, then Kha'Zix might randomly walk towards Rift Herald and stop uh, Lee Sin. So I definitely want to push. Uh, try and bait the Kha'Zix down here to maybe try and kill me. But hopefully we can get the tower and we can get the Rift Herald as well. So this is a, this is kind of a dangerous playstyle. I wouldn't necessarily advocate you guys doing this. Because yeah, there's the Kha'Zix right there. So I baited him down. Um, thankfully he didn't just immediately kill me. Um, we had a large enough mini wave that we probably could fight him uh, without too much difficulty. We're dealing a ton of damage. Misfortune does a pretty bad ult. We get the tower, we get the kill. Um, Misfortune's here, we can probably turn on her, but then uh, Oriana shows up and we're kind of screwed. Uh, we do force Misfortune to burn her heal and her flash, so that was probably, that was actually a misplay on her part. Um, and not too bad for us. We wind up getting a kill, so we go one for one on the kills, and uh, we wind up getting a tower and multiple summoner spells, so that's a pretty good deal. Fortunately, uh, Lee Sin winds up killing himself uh, in top lane, so that's not very good. So anyway, let's let's take a look at uh, what the um, what I've built so far. So I've hit my Rage Blade. I've hit my Boots too. Uh, I believe the next item that I'm gonna go for is Wit's End. Um, I know some people might think that Wit's End is a little bit more of a trolley pick. I actually really like it, especially in this game where they've got a Blitzcrank, they've got the Oriana, they've got the Rakan who's building really weird. He went for. Um, uh, Gunblade. I see my Fortune is to their blue if I immediately flash Ulter for an easy kill. Maybe, not, maybe didn't need the flash, but I kind of was, was wanted some revenge. And I knew her flash was down because she just wasted it on me to try and get the kill last time. So I'm going to go for Wit's End uh, next item to kind of uh, give myself a little bit more MR. And also it gives me a lot more on hit damage. Uh, it allows me to do more magic damage, which makes it harder to itemize against me. Um, it kind of evens out um, Varus's uh, distribution as far as physical and magic damage, so it's a good item for him. I'm definitely going to go more towards an on-hit build uh, today. 
uh, in, in previous seasons, Varus a lot of times would go for kind of like the poking, kind of artillery mage kind of build. Um, but they wound up nerfing his Q, so now he builds more on it, relying on the damage from his uh, W to wind up dealing most of the damage. And he's, he's a very strong as an on-hit uh, build as well. I think he's really good. He kind of turns into this uh, ult bot, kind of like Ash, who runs Runans and multiple attack speed items. So we're trying to get as much damage on the tower as possible. I'm trying to peel for my Fiora. I wind up getting a lot of damage down on um, the Misfortune. I'm going to force her back. I think this Rift Herald timing is probably a little bit too early. We probably could have gotten the tower without the Rift Herald. Um, but we can keep pushing with the Rift Herald. I think we actually wind up overstaying here. Good uh, parry by Fiora. Wind up getting the kill. Or sorry, repost uh, by Fiora. Good freaking chocolate by Oriana. And I just get me to lead to So Kha'Zix is super fed at this point. Yeah, he's got 11 kills. So this Kha'Zix is a massive problem. So you can see that even after all of that, um, we've closed the gap, we're down to uh, only about 3k gold, but this 11 kill Kha'Zix is going to be an absolute nightmare to deal with. And even this Rakan is doing a surprising amount of damage. Um, very strange build from him. Good bait by the Nunu trying to get the ultimate, but yeah. So you can see right now, um, our farm is uh, okay, it's not great. Um, we got the highest farm among our teammates, but our farm is, is not very good, from my opinion. Um, so at this point in the game, I'm kind of like, what the hell am I doing? Uh, I try to focus more on farm. I can't go into a side lane, because Kha'Zix can show up anytime he wants and just instantly murder me. So I have to be really careful anytime I push past River. I gotta be very, very careful. Uh, I have to have multiple teammates and wards anytime I go past River. So I'm sure Talia hates me because I'm stealing all of her farm, uh, but I really can't. I can't go off and push a side lane by myself. We see Misfortune bot lane, so that kind of gives us an indication that we can push. Um, unfortunately, we knew that Blitzcrank was over there. He dropped a ward over that wall. I don't know why Talia locked over there. Uh, that was kind of obvious. I should have just left. Instead, I tried to save her. That was a mistake on my part. I should have just left her. Uh, and we would have just had that one death rather than multiple deaths. Uh, especially with the fact that we've got Lee Sin, bot lane, a few are top lane. So we shouldn't have been trying to push so, so hard without vision on other people. Lee Sin winds up getting a kill, just barely. But I think we wind up losing mid tower because of this. So not a very good trade. Yeah, that's not a Yeah, so that mistake was, was huge. It uh, basically ballooned their gold back up to a, a 5k gold lead. Actually, yeah, 5.5k gold lead. So we're still struggling, right? You know, that's a, still a massive gold lead for 20 minutes. Um, so I think at this point, I don't... This might be my last mistake that I make. I might make one or two more, but I think right now I'm, I'm finally getting the hint that I'm playing absolutely like garbage and that I need to play more safe and play more controlled and really focus on my farming and getting my items so that I can actually be powerful enough to carry the game. So no drakes are up, Baron's going to be spawning here in less than a minute. We're kind of in this this mid-game lull, uh, Kha'Zix winds up killing Talia. I'm kind of playing with fire right now, so I'm still doing stupid stuff. Uh, thankfully he doesn't jump on me. Yep, Fiora dies, Talia dies, so yeah, you can see what this game is. This is a game that most people would probably surrender, but we wind up playing it out. Um, and I'm glad I did, because we wind up winning this game, and it was it was actually a really fun game at the end of the day. But it was, it was frustrating right now. Right now, in this part of the game, it was super frustrating. So... Trust me, I know I know you've been here before, I know that you want to have that urge to kind of just, um, you know, forfeit immediately. I'm going to try and show you guys how you can come back from some of these games. So I see this massive juicy wave top lane, so I'm going to come up and try and collect it as much as possible. I'm going to end up missing a few of the CS, but um, yeah, so I'm going to push this out. Lee Sin's getting caught again. I forget if he dies on, at this point in the game. Yeah, he winds up dying, so we're just gonna push it out. We see most of them are bot lane. Um, 
So yeah, we're just gonna get as much CS as we can. Just keep farming, just power farm as much as possible. We're at about, yeah, 160 farm at uh, 20 minutes. Actually, that's not too bad. I mean, that's that's eight CS a minute. So that's not, that's not too bad. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna basically just be trying to power farm as hard as possible to kind of get an advantage over this misfortune because they are way far ahead in kills. We got 13 kills, uh, pretty massive gold lead against us. So they're threatening this bot tower, our Fiora and Artelia just died in a 2v2. Um, so we're trying to defend this bot lane tower. I don't know if we're gonna be able to. Nunu's kind of posturing aggressively. I don't know if he should be doing that. We see the Kha'Zix is there, so I'm kind of trying to play safe. I'm just trying to wave clear. The more I can keep the minions off the tower, the less likely they are to dive me. So as soon as the, the wave hits the tower, I'm trying to um, clear it as fast as possible. Oh, there's a Blitzcrank looking for a pull over the wall. Yep, there's the charm. I wind up flashing out, I survive. I land my ultimate on to uh, Blitzcrank, so Nunu's able to survive, and my team's back up again, so um, I think we wind up still losing the tower. I don't know why Lee Sin's pushing top, it's like why? Um, yep, so I wind up getting another kill, so Fiora's dead again, so you can, so you can tell the frustration in my voice, this is kind of how the game went. Um, yeah, so you can see like Fiora's three and eight, Talisa's two and five, Talia's two and eight. I'm six and four. Um, Nunu's uh, one and five. So the entire team is struggling a lot. Um, but we, I know that I can scale up pretty hard, and as long as I don't die, that um, there is a chance for me to win. But it does rely on the enemy team throwing a little bit. Let's be honest. Ooh, that's some sick damage. Talia goes down again. They're just trying to play way too aggressive right now. They're trying to trade when really we can't. We're just way too far behind. Yeah, we're almost at a 10k deficit right now. Right now is really just kind of trying to stop the bleeding as much as possible. And a lot of that has to do with just clearing waves as fast as possible. Not trying to fight, just trying to clear waves. Oops, yep. Because the wall instantly released. That was a mistake on my part. I should have anticipated that with the tower going down. So yeah, let that be a lesson to you, uh, new eighty carry games. Don't don't do stupid stuff like that against you know. What do you get? Like fifteen kills right now? Seventeen kills. Right now. Yeah. Don't do that against the tech cost. Worry with her ult. We are even get a, a kill back. But yeah, still having issues. Ooh. Oh, good job. Fiora's actually starting to play a little bit better. I think she was super tilted from the early game. But yeah. So yep. Come back and spawn. Baron is up, so I can't stay in bot lane for too long. This is something that you really need to keep in mind. If you're in AD carry, you think, oh, I'm supposed to go bot lane. I'm supposed to push bot lane. I'm supposed to take bot lane towers. Once you get past this 20 minute mark, you need to be really careful going bot lane because the enemy team can rush Baron. Right now, it's okay because Kha'Zix is dead, Orianna is dead, so I can I can be in bot lane, but I shouldn't push bot lane for too long, otherwise I risk them trying to rush the Baron, and I won't be able to rotate fast enough to actually assist my team in stopping it. So I just get the wave pushing in my favor, and then I go mid lane to try and clear out the supers. Um, and basically, I'm going to try and play around Baron as much as possible, try to get visual on Baron at all times. That was me pinging the question mark, meaning that I don't know if they're trying to start Baron or something like that, since none of them, we don't have any vision of them. Um, yeah, so we get a ward over, try to get the Scuttle Crab, um, try to deny as much vision as possible. And really right now, uh, the goal is just to stall. I think we get a good catch on Kha'Zix here. Yeah, Kha'Zix going to step too far forward, we get a good catch. That was good by Lee. Went up kicking him back in, so that's a really good shutdown. See the misfortune is bot lane? So misfortune is making the mistake that I was just saying not to make. You don't want to push too much uh, if you're a bot lane marksman when uh, Baron's up. 
but it's going to be very hard for us to take Baron with the uh, deficit that we have right now, the gold deficit that we have. So we're kind of just sticking mid lane. Uh, Khan goes in. I wind up using my ult. Uh, I wind up getting the kill, I believe, on the oh, first one. Goes out. Mine. So yeah, we kind of lost that fight pretty badly. Um, yeah, and I think I kind of abandoned ship here. I'm like, there's, there's no way. Uh, Lee Sin's pushing bot lane again, so he's not a grouping of the team. I think Lee maybe thinks that he should try and scale up as well. I don't know, either that or he's just kind of tilted. Um, but yeah, for some reason he's not, he's never kind of grouping up. He's just kind of just trying to farm as much as possible. Uh, they're kind of pushing down our Nexus Towers and Lee is, is still kind of pushing. So. so basically, right now we're in a situation where if I die, uh, the game is potentially over. So I need to just be super careful and just stay alive and just kind of stall them as much as possible. Trying to gain the slowdown uh, on the Oriana. Uh, Fiora is doing pretty good. We wind up getting, wind up getting two picks and immediately I go back to clearing weight. So you see that I don't chase for kills because uh, I'm in a mobile AD carry. There's no way that I'm going to be able to get kills. Uh, my team actually over chases and winds up dying. Fed Kha'Zix is here. I gotta be really careful. You know, Rakan can engage onto me, Kha'Zix can engage onto me. So I gotta just play very safe. Because if I die, this game is over right now. That's the kind of mentality that you have to have. Is that if you're kind of the only person in the way of uh, your team uh, losing, you gotta say, if I die, the game is over. So I nearly die. I nearly do something really stupid. I'm able to flash out. Um, we wind up losing a tower because of it. As you can see, I'm not trying to fight them. I'm just trying to clear. Just trying to stall. Um, the, the reason why you do this is the longer that you stall, the less the goal difference matters, right? Like if you're, you know, 20 minutes into the game and there's a 5k gold lead, that's a massive gold lead for 20 minutes into the game. But when you get up to, you know, 50 minutes into the game, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, if somebody's got a, you know, a thousand, a couple thousand gold lead. Um, I go up to clear the wave, but Lee Sin clears it. Lee Sin keeps pushing top lane for some reason. I'm a little bit tilted, so I go to clear jungle camps. I'm just trying to get as much gold as I can, as much farm as I can. If I can get to six items, then I have a chance. But um, I really have to. I basically have to out CS the misfortune to have a shot. I get pulled, um, but I know that I can finish off the kill. I know that I have enough items now, enough damage that I can kill them. Immediately, you can see I just go back to pushing. I'm not trying to chase for kills. I'm not really trying to do any of that stuff. I'm just kind of trying to push, uh, get the waves back on our side of the map. Kind okay, of face tank the misfortune ultimate. I don't think that she was farming very well. Oh no, she's farming decently. She's at 213. I'm at 241. So we wind up getting another kill onto the Rakan, so Kha'Zix and Rakan are both dead. Uh, so we feel like we can go for Baron, especially with Nunu. Uh, and I can kind of shred through the Baron very quick with my uh, light stack on my W. Baron drops really fast, we wind up getting the Baron, immediately try to back. You don't want to fight after you clear Baron, you want to try and back, spend gold. Uh, and then continue trying to push out the wave. So massive wave coming into bot lane. Um, I don't think if I, I don't think I get to clear this that much. So basically taking uh, Baron off the map, even though we're not going to be able to really push that much with it, it basically prevents them from getting it and pushing down our towers. So all we're trying to do is stall. That's all we're doing is trying to stall as much as possible. You can see we still have about uh, a 5k gold deficit. But we've reached a point here where I've got three items going towards my fourth item, which is going to be Runan's Hurricane. Um, so I'm pretty damn strong right now. Uh, looks like Misfortune went for the crit build. Kind of a weird crit build. So I think that her um, build is a little bit suboptimal. So I'm definitely stronger than her right now. Get the red buff, ward up, kind of retreat back to Drake. Uh, this is some miscommunication. We got Fiora waiting in that bush right there when we use the blast cone. So now Fiora just kind of went in by herself. Uh, not a very good play. Uh, winds up losing her GA. We killed the Blitzcrank. 
shockwave comes in, I avoid it. You can see I'm kind of just dancing out. I'm trying to keep track of as much of the CC as I can. I'm trying to stay away from the CC because I know that if I die, uh, it's going to be a bad day. Miss Fortune steps up. I know that I can kill her because she comes over the wall. She winds up killing me, unfortunately. So it winds up being a uh, 3 for 4 overall. That fight would have been a lot better if the Fiora had waited. Uh, I think there was definitely some miscommunication between our team because we went over the you know the wall and she kind of engaged right as we went over the wall. So I believe this causes us to lose lose yet another Drake. So we've lost multiple Drakes off of uh, mistakes, um, and that's not the end of the world. But those Drakes wind up they they add up, especially if the enemy team can get Elder Drakes. So we can see now the enemy team now has three uh, Drakes. So, uh, yeah, You'll f that comes into play later on, because the enemy team winds up getting Elder Drake, and uh, very interesting battle. That so, uh, Kha'Zix winds up overstaying. I think we wind up picking him off. Yeah. Yep, we wind up picking him off. So that's a very good for us. Um, so at this point, we just kind of want to push out the lanes, try to get down some vision. Uh, you know, two of their really good players are dead, the Rakan's dead, and the uh, Kha'Zix is dead, so we feel pretty confident. We see Misfortune bot lane, so we know that we can keep pushing uh, towards uh, mid. I'm calling for grouping. Uh, Talia is taking forever right now. Uh, Fiora says that she wants to split top lane. I think I kind of rushed this. I probably should have waited an extra wave. Uh, Blitzcrank comes in. I wind up taking aggro. Yeah, I'm, I'm like just tanking a ridiculous amount of tower shots. So I step out, and for some reason the tower re-aggroes me. I have no idea why that happened. I initially thought it must have been like red buff or something, but I didn't have red buff. So that was that was kind of confusing. I stepped out of tower range. I wasn't attacking a champion. I stepped back in and I, I re-aggroed the tower. Which is very weird, but that winds up uh, killing me, and that's that's a, actually a really huge mistake. This is a mistake that almost throws the entire game. So one one death, one death on my part, winds up nearly throwing the entire game. That's kind of the mentality that you have to have uh, when you're the carry on your team. It doesn't matter how many times your team dies. It doesn't matter. They can they can feed 10 kills, 15 kills, 20 kills. If you die a single time. And you're the carry, you're most likely going to lose. So just keep that in mind. And don't blame your team when that happens, right? You know what you have to do. Like, if your team is not that good, you know that you have to play that perfect game where you don't die uh, in order to win. So if you die and you lose because of that, you have no one to blame but yourself. So they break into our inhib again. Uh, that was a good kick by Lee, just absolutely horrible by me. I missed absolutely everything. Um, but I think Kha'Zix gives us another shot. Yeah, we get them on the run. I'm chasing a little bit too much for the kills. I know that it, the death timers are getting long enough that it's not good to chase for kills. Still missing everything. Kha'Zix splashes the wall. Oh, that's, that was super greedy by Kha'Zix, winds up overstaying, I kill the Blitzcrank, uh, Fiora kills the Kha'Zix, and so, yeah, I played absolutely horrible right there, um, but we were able to pick up some kills. You see, I'm just pushing. I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. That's all I'm trying to do is push. My t uh, Talia and Fiora are going mid lane, there's no reason to go mid lane, right? Look at the wave. The wave is already all uh, to our base, we're not going to get... Uh, mid tower. I know people are like, push mid, you know, and get down the mid and hit, but it's not going to happen. We should be going bot lane. That's where our um, that's where our wave is. We see that Rakan is teleporting for some reason. Um, my team is tower diving. Uh, we wind up losing Fiora, which is the person we really needed to teleport back. So I'm like, shit. Um, the game's probably over unless Lee Sin can stop them. I'm just trying to you know, do as much damage as I can, potentially, you know, take a couple people with me. Um, Nunu gets hooked. So yeah, I'm trying to kill the, the blitz crank. I wind up being really stupid and wind up dying. Um, so yeah, second death, so I definitely kind of deserve to lose at this point. But thankfully, 
Uh, Lee Sin is able to kill the Rakan, and uh, we hold on just barely. Miss Fortune comes up here with like no health. I don't know what she's trying to do. Yep, Lee Sin flashes her, immediately kills her. So yeah, don't do that if you're Miss Fortune. So you can see there's it's kind of a clown fiesta at this point. A lot of people make mistakes. I'm making mistakes. The enemy team is making mistakes. And a lot of times it comes down to who capitalizes on the other person's mistakes more. So like I made a mistake, but I wasn't punished for that mistake because the enemy team made their own mistakes. So we got Baron spawning in uh, a couple seconds. Oh, there's the Kha'Zix. Good job. That's really impressive that Lee Sin was able to kill Kha'Zix when he was that fed. Yeah, 25 kills right now. So, very interesting. Alright, I'm finally back up. I know Baron is up, but we can't leave our base. If we leave our base, we've got an open nexus that can wind up killing it. So I tell Fiora to stay behind. It's tell Fiora to just watch the base. Like, that's her job. She's the best duelist. So she should, in theory, be able to stop anyone who tries to uh, backdoor us. So you can see I'm trying to get the, uh, the Scuttle Crab. I avoid the Blitz Crank Hook. We're kind of trying to focus the Baron, um, but the enemy team is there. Nunu's trying to posture to, to ward them off. I catch out the, the Blitzcrank. I don't want to give him a chance to hook me, so I kind of try to force him away. We get caught by the Oriana Shockwave. His fortune ult's coming through. I try to back up. I heal. Try and get it back a little bit of health. I start auto-attacking the Baron to regain some of my health. Thankfully, they don't try to pressure me or challenge me. Uh, I nearly get killed. Um, but as soon as I, you know, can, I back out. So the, we won the fight, right? We got, we got the, the Baron, so we should just try and leave. Rakan's over here trying to end the game again. Uh, we wind up being able to stop him, thankfully. Uh, he kind of, again, kind of sacrifices his life trying to do this backdoor play. So we get another Baron. We get another Baron to try and just stall them out. But the issue is, is that, uh, our Lee Sin and our Talia die which means that they can get Elder Drake. So Elder Drake, they've got those three Drakes from earlier, and um, at this point in the game, I think Elder Drake is more important for them than Baron. Uh, they can definitely, once they get Elder Drake, they can force a fight, and they should be able to beat us. So I'm, I'm really worried right now. I feel like the game is over, but there's no way we can contest uh, the Elder Drake because we don't have our Lee Sin or, or our Talia up. So I'm just trying to farm up as much as possible uh, right now and, and just try to, you know, cross my fingers and hope that we get a really good team fight to, um, you know, if they make a mistake. Nunu uh, has his uh, Knight Vow on me, which is really useful. So I'm full build now. So my final build is uh, Ginsu's Rage Blade, and my second item was Wit's End. My third item was Blade of the Rune King, which maybe wasn't a great buy of this game because uh, they don't have any tanks. Um, then I went Ru uh, Runan's Hurricane, and then my final item was an Infinity Edge, because I, I felt like Infinity Edge would be a good item against that squishy team to have more of a crit chance. So, we, uh, they get the other Drake, uh, we kind of engage in this fight, which is really weird, but I'm kind of all alone to kind of just free fire on people. I wind up picking up one kill, second kill, third kill onto the Oriana, uh, Blitzcrank is running away. Um, I went up flashing onto the Misfortune and getting a Quadric Hell. I'm not too worried about getting the Penta, you know, yeah, Penta, whatever. Uh, I just want to win this game. I want to get out of this game because we had a massive deficit. We finally equalized the gold uh, and we do have a chance to win. So I'm not going to waste that opportunity to immediately push down. And uh, fortunately, we don't have a minion wave, so I'm, we're kind of uh, aggroing the turret. Doing the best we can. Blitz Crank comes forward. I dodge his hook. I realize he's too far forward. I can go for the kill. I know it's not going to be a Penta, but it's an unofficial Penta kill. Um, so I, I'll, I'll take that any day of the week. And that's the end of the game. So this was a completely emotional game. There was times when I was super tilted. The entire team was losing really badly. People were being passive aggressive and not grouping. You know, just, you know, AFK pushing side lanes when they should be grouping. We were 10k gold down, um, but, you know, I was able to massively farm up. I wound up with over 300 farm uh, at the end of the game. I think I averaged around 8.5 CS a minute. Uh, highest CS in the game, highest damage in the game. 
and basically just kind of stalled out the game where their goal difference didn't matter as much. We got that perfect team fight, even though they had the Elder Drake. Uh, and the big thing was you just stay alive. That's really rule one of being an AD carry is stay alive. That is your sole job is stay alive. It's basically stay alive, get gold, do damage, right? You, you really need to stay alive, first of all, get as much gold as you can as fast as you can, and then just output consistent DPS. Just hit whatever's in front of you. Uh, don't try to dive the back line and just, you know, stay alive and do damage and you should be able to out damage everyone so i hope you guys enjoyed that i know that it was kind of a, a clown fiesta of a game but i thought that it was a really good game to kind of show people that even if you're really far down even if you know your team is is being passive aggressive and doing stupid stuff you still can win if you play smart if you farm super hard and you position well so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you want to see more of these, please let me know. Um, jungle and AD carry are definitely my best roles, but I do have some niche champions, some like pocket picks that I have for the other roles. So let me know what other uh, champions or other roles you would like me to do, and I'll try to do that in the future. I am working on part four for Juggernauts. I know that that video has been super, super late. I'm trying. Uh, those beginner guides are incredibly draining on me like it just takes a lot of effort for me to put those together and I just haven't had I haven't had the energy to really deal with it right now it's just a lot of things going on in my life with work and and other personal stuff so I'm gonna try and get it out this week um, but no promises after the juggernauts are done the next class will be divers so I'll talk about that more uh, but oh I hope you all have a fantastic day, great weekend. This is Randomonium signing off.